Hey, are you looking for something that's got all the flavors of the sea and you can bring it up on dry land? It's scallops, shrimp, all chopped up, cooked with some celery and onion, and guess what it's topped with? Cheese it crackers. It's a cowboy shrimp bake, best thing in the world. Hey, my name's Kent Rollins, and thank y'all for stopping by. We do a whole lot of cowboy cooking here. We do cast iron care, Dutch oven cooking, and some grilling, but today you're in for a special treat because we're going to do a cowboy shrimp bake. Now, I found out long many years ago that I really do crave me some good seafood dishes, but I've took a way to blend this together with the stuff that I can find here locally and make me a good shrimp because, break. Let me, let me just pan out. There is no ocean here. Really? No. No seafood. Fresh seafood to us when we was growing up, you know what it was, don't it, Shan? No. Mrs. Paul's fish sticks. That was about as fresh as it got. So instead of stuffing these shrimp, and I ain't got time to do all that, we're going to mix this all in one little Dutch oven to make it to where it is really handy for you to cook. A one-pot dish. That's all it's going to take. Just as always, the printable recipe will be right down there in the description below. It will have everything you need. So let's get to cooking this thing. Well, as you seen me, folks, a while ago, I took a half of an onion and diced it up really good. Now, I left that root end in there, as you've seen. Slice her one way, then slice her the other way. Turn it up on the side slice her down through there that root will keep it intact that's a tip and i didn't even charge you nothing for it one stalk of celery split her down the middle and then dice it up really fine and you might be noticing where did i get this fancy corsage that shan gave me a while ago that's got hair all over it well it's southwest oklahoma and it's march hey you never know which way the wind's going to blow so if you see something different don't think it's a spider if it was i'd have done killed it so we got to that point we're going to take how many tablespoons of butter one two three and a four that's a half a stick of butter. I got a 12 inch Dutch oven. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there, set it over there and let the butter get them good and melted. We'll put in the celery and onion. Now, if you're cooking this in the house over about medium heat, you wanna cook it five or six minutes there till it gets, just till they get good and tender and then we'll go on from there. But make sure you stir it pretty frequently. So I have me a pound of them red shrimp that I have grown to really like and you've seen me peel them and save the tails and everything else and looks like the man that was shelling might have got some of the pile mixed up with the wrong one so you you want to be careful make sure that you look back through there if you like me let me add them to the soup now I took them shrimp tails and skin put them in there and covered them with water really well and I'm gonna bring that to a good rolling boil because that is gonna be our broth that we need to make this. I just like to let them boil about four or five minutes, get all that flavor incorporated in that broth, and then it is ready to go. And I really like these red shrimp. I've got to use them a lot. To me, they taste a little more like a lobster, and I be liking them. I like to cut them in like a bite-sized piece. You can dice them even smaller if you got a mind to. But you wanna make sure when you got these shrimp that first of all, they are not frozen they're thawed out really well and they're not cooked they're raw shrimp so what goes to that folks that i really like to put with it Woo -wee! that is some scallops and i got about three-fourths to a pound of scallops we're going to mince these little rascals because i need them to blend in there pretty well so let's go to chopping and then we'll get them really diced up really well because this gives it so much flavor well you can see them is minced up, chopped up, diced up really well. That's the way I like to leave them. Now I got three garlic cloves sitting right over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and mash the ever living snot out of them. And then we're gonna dice them up because they go in right at the same time as the shrimp and the scallops. I would have took this right over there and dusted all that in it, but folks, I might have spilt some of it and this stuff is what I call precious. So we're just gonna dump her in there just like this because I want every little drop to get in there and get some of that love. Make sure you give it a good stir before we ever go back that way. And it comes to this point right here, what we're gonna put on it, a little Red River Ranch original. Now, you can use what you think you got on hand, but if you really want it to be the best dish you can create, get you some of this. Shan will have you a link, she will. Is that product placement? You guaranteed it it is. Give it one more stir and we'll go back to the fire and we might even have to stoke it a little to get all this to go in. But whew, this is going to be a pretty dish as well. 
and I can already tell you it's going to be fine dining. Now when this gets back to a simmer and it is nearly there, I'm just going to go ahead and reach in here. And folks, you got to be careful with this one because it ain't got no handle and it will burn your finger. I'm going to add about a cup and a half of this shrimp broth. Make sure you didn't get none of them tails or other creatures in there. And we're going to bring this back to a pretty good little boil in here. So this is beginning to simmer just a little and we're going to bring it to a pretty hard simmer and not just an old rolling bowl. I just want it to simmer there, get all them flavors measured in for about four to five minutes till everything gets to blended well. Then we'll add the rest of it to it and be ready to go. Don't watch this part. There's a shell. Good. Well, we've been on about four minutes we have if I was a guessing. And folks, I could eat that just like it is right now, but to make this like I want it to be, Look what I was carrying around in my pocket. A sleeve of them Ritz crackers, uh-huh. Everything tastes better on the Ritz. That's what Andy Griffith said. Just give them a good crumbling. Oh yeah, I like it better now. It's got to sort of bind together there, folks, and we get rid of all that moisture, and that's what's happening right here. Oh yeah. Folks, we ended up using two sleeves there to get it to the right consistency, and you can see about where it's at right there. It went from that feeling nearly like mashed potato soup to standing up just right. So let's go ahead and take this off the fire and take it back to the table. You can see we done got most of that moisture absorbed out of there with two sleeves of rich crackers, or was it two and a half? Just two. Okay, two sleeves of rich crackers. Now, get her leveled out here. It's come to that point now to where what we're gonna do we're going to have us some Cheez-Its because I'm hungry. I'm just going to have a little snack. Y'all bear with me because whew, Shan's had me down here working for a long time. Usually about a cup full of crumbled cheese crackers, Cheez-Its crackers, which is about that many. And you can leave them a little rough if you want, but I like to go right there on top. And you can make it to your suiting, however many you think you'd like to have on there. This will make about a cup and a quarter. This will make a cup and a half. Is that precisely measured? Yes, ma'am, it's precisely measured. These hands have never failed me. No. It's just got to bake. If you was in the house, you'd put the oven on 350 and preheat it. Put this in there in that cast iron skillet that you made it out of. Oh, cracker got hung up. <laughs> Slipper in there. Go for about 20 to 25 minutes. Things will sort of brown up on the top. And when you open that oven door, you better shut the front door and the back door because people are going to be breaking in to get it, I promise you. So let me get this over, put some coals on top of it, and it won't be long till we eat it. Now you see me load the bottom up pretty heavy and the top up pretty heavy. Now I'm on top of a tall trivet, and we do got some breeze today, so we're going to have to rotate to even this out. Now if you ain't got a trivet, set this down, put your coals about that far away from the bottom of that oven and pretty light. You can still go pretty heavy on top, but if you ain't got a trivet, hey, guess what? You can get some from us off our website at www.kentrollins.com or call BR549. It'll get you the same place. But I think some of you probably noticed by now too, where is that little furry dog that's always down here helping us? Well, springtime in Oklahoma and down here along these river bluffs, folks, when it's about 73 degrees, them snakes is out of crawling, and I love that beagle enough that I know he wouldn't be a paying attention. So he's taking a nap at the house. He is fine. He will be on the next one, I promise you. Well, you see me, I had to move them out. The wind got up about 20, 25 it did, and we'll create a microwave, because I guarantee you if I get that lid lifter and look in there right now, we've been on about four minutes, I guarantee you, things is happening. So well, we've been on about maybe eight to 10 minutes at the most, even after we rake them coals back about four or five minutes probably. So you can cook it to here. And when Shan looked down in there, let me get out of the light so y'all can see. You can see that this is beginning to set up on top and that's sort of what we're after. That bottom ain't got to cook, but just a little bit longer. I just want to make sure that I get most of that moisture cooked out of it and it's going to set up and I'm seeing very few bubbles of moisture, so we are in good shape. We're gonna leave it on the bottom heat just a little bit longer, take it off, set it over, finish browning that top up, 
Mm, done deal. Well, folks, it is a done deal. This dog will hunt, stick a fork in it. We are through, but we gotta let this thing set and rest sort of like a steak. We're gonna let her set four or five minutes because I want it to sit there and congeal just a little more. What we is looking for when this is cooking, we got all the moisture out of it nearly over there when we had to add the extra Rick's crackers. But when you cook this, all the rest of that moisture escapes. You can see, folks, it's sort of springy to the touch. And it's not dry, I promise you. It's got enough moisture in there from them shrimp and them scallops that even though we took most of the moisture out, adding the crackers and cooking it that long, hey, you have still got a delectable dish here. If Shannon zoom in here, I want you to see all that good pretty color that's in there. See them little shrimpies? Oh my gosh, scallops sort of help bind it all together. Mm, 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 mm. Pardon me while I go back three more times. Mm. Praise Jesus, pass the biscuits and do the crawdad back up shuffle. I mean, that stuff right there is good, folks. Mm. The to me, the flavors that bind in there together, the celery and the onion and the butter, the Holy Trinity, as they call it. But hey, that shrimp broth kicks it over the top. Thank you all you Louisiana folks for pointing that out to me last time off the etouffee video because that stuff right there mm, gives it such a good rich taste and it is ooh, so good. It's such a great dish to set on a table just for you and the family or to take to any Sunday afternoon social, anything in the world, any party. You will be talked about for a long time afterwards, but not in a bad way. They'll say, did you see that dish they brought? That is the best thing ever. It is a cowboy shrimp bait. Thank you so much for the comments that you have given us throughout the years. And just here recently, we had a young fellow that reached out to us and said, Ken, I need your prayers. My grandfather is about to pass. There were so many of y'all folks that reached out and said, we're praying for that young fellow. We're lifting him up. Folks, we don't have fans. We have family. And y'all have been family to us ever since we started. Let me give you a hug. Come on in here. Ain't that nice? Always remember, to me and Shen, y'all are very special people. But let's bring the world together through love, happiness, and a full plate, which makes a full stomach, which makes a happy dance. Yes, it does. You'll break down and go anytime. We thank our servicemen and women and all them veterans for keeping old Gloria flying there over camp. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. That way we all get to reap in the benefits we do. Thank you again so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you each and every one. And we'll see you down the Cowboy Shrimp Bait Trail. And this week, folks, I'm way behind on my shout outs. So let me get to it. Now this first feller, Chris Hughes, I met at a Sam store not long ago. He's a service man and he come up to me and shook my hand for doing these videos and saying what it meant to him. Chris, I tip my hat and thank you, brother, for your service. Also, a lady that's been commenting on our page for a long time, and that's Lisa Booker. Lisa, keep on cooking, honey. And a guy that I dearly love, he is good people he is, and that is Andrew Miller. Thank you so much, Andrew, for always watching, for always the positive comments, for always making me feel like me and you as family, because we are. And a man that always tells me nearly every week if it's got a certain food in it. Ken, I can't eat that, but thank you so much for the blessing. Andrew Ocean, thank you so much for the blessing, my friends.